Hey guys, welcome to seven drum editing tips in seven days. This little lesson is going to be about how to add reverb to your drums properly. Now, if you are still adding reverb to your main channel strip, you are doing things all wrong. Whatever you put in series in this section here with your EQ and your compression, all these affect each other in the order you put them in. So for example, if you put uh, EQ after your reverb, it would only EQ the output of the reverb, which would be the reverb itself, um, which obviously makes things sound unnatural and your reverb won't sound right and neither will your EQ. Also, if you put your reverb on your channel strip, then it doesn't sound very natural. It doesn't fade naturally as reverb should. Reverb should just fade out naturally. You know, it's the sound of space. It shouldn't just cut off. But if you automate your, uh, your tracks at any point to go down to complete silence, um, say if uh, there's a certain section of the song where you have an effect go in and you uh, automate your drums down to basic silence um, and that reverb cuts off, then that doesn't sound very natural. So just to give you an example of this now, I'm gonna add some reverb to just the snare. Just a snare top. So way too much reverb here, but just listen to how um, this has such an impact um, on the reverb just cutting off if I were to automate this down. So if I automated this fader down to negative infinity um, to complete silence, then that reverb should still ring out a bit. It should still be there. It should still decay. It should still um, not just cut off all of a sudden. And when you have it in this uh, main channel strip here, that's what it does. And it doesn't sound very natural. So the solution to this is to not use your reverb in your main channel strip, but to use it in an auxiliary track instead. So let's create an auxiliary channel strip now. Let's just go to options, create new auxiliary channel strip. You can see bizarrely that's placed it here. No, it's because I'm on the snare. Um, put that to there. Right, we'll set the input to a bus that we're not using. Choose bus eight, that's free. Rename this to Drum Reverb. Then we need to highlight these drum tracks. Add in Bus 8 Drum Reverb. Set them all to 0 dB for now. Add some reverb to this here. So let's have a listen to this now. Uh, we'll turn this up and we'll listen to the reverb while it's on the auxiliary track. So we can hear now that sounds great, that sounds natural. Um, you can use this fader here to sort of determine the overall amount of reverb you want. And then I'd use the sends for the buses individually to choose how much reverb you want on certain elements. So with me personally, I don't like a lot on the kick. So, whoops. I don't like a lot of reverb on the kick, so I would turn that down usually to around about here. Um, and then I'd just fine tune the amount of reverb on each element by using these individual sends here. And that is it, really easy to do, but that is the proper way to add reverb to anything, uh, regardless of whether it's your drums, your guitars or your vocals. Um, same applies for delay as well. You want a separate auxiliary for your reverb and delay. 
and just keep these uh, keep this main channel strip open for things like uh, dynamic processing, your EQ and things like that. So I hope you found this very simple tutorial helpful. Uh, the same sort of thing applies for any DAW that you're on. You need to create an auxiliary channel strip and send audio to it with your reverb plugin on. That'll send it back and that'll give you the natural sounding reverb sound that you're after.